Uh, hello. Hello, everybody. How you doing? Hi. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Little, no, little no, no, no. Oh. Late where I'm at, but yeah, good morning, huh? How y'all doing? Um, dude. Pretty good. I lost my cat. It's Wednesday. My dudes. I had some, you said you lost your cat? Yeah, my cat ran away. Like, out of your house away? No, out of my hands. Oh, Jesus. I thought you said... I wanted you, to grab him. I didn't know if your cat died or if he just <laughs> left you. He disappeared from your... Okay, well, that's, that's much... Oh, yeah, the indie session started. Uh, my cat just died. Yeah, <laughs> that's fortunately not the case, huh? No. Um, I don't, I don't remember. Did we, did we actually meet last week or was it the week before? It was, it was last, last week. week. It was last week. So this is the second week in a row that we have met. It's been a bit, actually, since we've done that, I think. So we're on a, we're on a roll here. I'm going to try to keep it going. Yeah. Um, also, I'd like one of y'all to tell me what happened last time. There's a reward. Rick, you already have your reward from last week, but you can double up if you want to try again. I'd really want we, someone else to try, though. Are we live? Yeah, we've been live. <laughs> Did you forget? <laughs> oh, man. Good job, Rick. I'm so proud of you. Okay, I didn't see you do anything weird, so you're, you're, you're in the clear, right? It's all good. Not don't, yet. Don't rewatch yeah. the FOD. <laughs> <laughs> uh, does um, anyone want to want to give the recap? If not, I can do it. Yeah, I made I made a sheep friend, and it had a... Well, actually, okay, so we fought the bugbear, right? Mm -hmm. And his little minions. And... We tied him to a tree. We went, uh, Sal went and told the wolves what was up. And then we were all headed back to town. And then this little sheep runs up to me and is like, Oh my god, save me. And all I heard was, blah, blah, blah. Oh my god, I'm adorable. <laughs> so of course I've got to help the sheep. He's so fluffy, man. He's so fluffy. Uh, he had a scroll of uh, animal... Speaking, speak with animals, animals speaking. Yeah. Speak with animals. Mm -hmm. Speak with and animals. Yes, <laughs> yes, we, <laughs> yes, we did. Who's right talking back. about? He's right there. Look at that. It was a trick. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then this orc came up and was like, I want that sheep. And the sheep's like, I'm a wizard. So we got to now save the wizard sheep. Do you know the? Did the sheep give you a name by chance? The sheep's name? Mm hmm. Cynthia Shine Bright. Oh, Cynthia? That, that is correct. It, uh, it is a Cynthia Shine Bright has come to ask you for aid. And I believe you asked him, hey, what's up with you? And he was like, let me tell you. And that's when this big old orc and his uh, crew rolled up on you, right? What's the orc's yeah. name? Yeah. Um, Guz. that that is correct. Yeah, Guz. I believe you guys tried to talk at first and tried to kind of haggle to keep the sheep and give them something else, which started trying his patience after a while, and then eventually negotiations sort of broke down, and uh, he was running up to swing while Rick was trying to respond with an attack as well. Yes. So um, we're, we're going to give a little bit more backstory to that to kind of put where we're at. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so essentially, um, I, uh, tried to trade, uh, the or ogre dude, this cool morning star that I got, and I made it look really cool and told him that fire was going to come out of it. And then he didn't believe me. So maybe fire will come out of it. Who knows? <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Baka, you have inspiration for the evening. Just this evening, so, you know, use it. Same for you, Rick. You should have had it last week, but you got it now. So, uh, both of you will be able to use some. All that being said, you know what? We're going to go straight over to the game and take us back to that page where we left off. You guys were right here on the roadside. Also, if it's too loud, make sure to turn down the ambience and your little music thing at the top right. Yes. So, Rick, I'm going to let you lead off as this huge orc is just charging at you with his axe raised. You can go ahead and throw the first blow. So, Dude, uh, I have a question. 
Mm -hmm. What's up? Are we in combat? Not yet. This is a pre-combat deal. Okay. So, like I said, I threw the Morning Star in the ground, and I said it was a special legendary weapon. That fire came out of it, and I cast Phantasma Force, um, essentially on the uh, on the area where the the Morning Star is, and having fire just come out of it, scorching underneath his feet. Okay, well, as he's charging at you, and you cast this phantasmal force to make it look like this thing is actually spouting fire, he runs right into it, and he fails tremendously a savings throw. Does anything happen besides the damage? Oh, um, nice. So, uh, basically, it's a, a, an illusion, uh, and the guy uh, believes that this illusion is happening, and it can continue to affect him as long as he's um, in that area. Okay. Well, he uh, he's, he's convinced that he's convinced that there's fire coming from this morning star. He is right on top of it, and you see him kind of lifting his feet up a bit more and moving his boots or try out of the flames, which none of none of the rest of you even see that's there. But he is heavily convinced that he is currently in the area of effect of this flaming maul or morning star that's on the ground. But he immediately is getting that swing off on you as well. Would a nineteen hit you? Uh, yes. You take five slashing damage, and now everyone can go ahead and roll some combat. Right-click your tokens, click that sword and shield cross, and roll initiative on your sheet. Wait, is mine... How do I tell if it's coggled or not? It'll be kind of highlighted in orange. It's hard to see. You gotta look real close. I think mine's tech. Okay, yeah, it is. Okay. Hold on. I think mine's uh, that's so. Uh... Ah, dang it. And, uh, the sheep will always be last on the order. Good sheep. Okay, looks like everyone's rolled here, and our enemies are gonna be, uh, up first as we're starting off with the, uh, official combat round now. A wolf is the quickest of the bunch, which seeing its master run forward will follow suit. As this wolf, actually, he's gonna go right there instead. He's gonna move up to you, Sal. He's gonna try to bite you. He can try. And we're leading off hot as this wolf just lunges at you with perfection, latching onto your arm for nine piercing damage. Ouch. Ouch. First roll's a crit, huh? Okay, all right. Uh, next up would be Guz, who is going to take another step forward. You see him kind of cocking his axe back over his shoulder. And he is going to swing with a huge arc as he's going to try to strike Arthur and Richard at the same time. which he does as he slashes through both of you for a total of 11 slashing damage. And uh, don't worry, we're, we're not done yet because now we have another enemy rolling up who is just slow enough to be five feet away from range of striking one of you again. And after all that, Sal, your turn. All right, um... I need to clear those. I'm going to cast Primal Savagery on this wolf. Primal Savagery? That just savagery. bit me. Let's see. You channel Primal Magic to cause your teeth or fingernails to sharpen and deliver a corrosive attack. Oh, I saw some corrosive damage. Yeah. Uh, and you rolled a 10 to hit? I believe that's how that worked. I don't know, I tried a different rolling method. It says 1d20 plus 4. So you rolled a 2, technically, but it doesn't show the 2. I don't like that, but uh, I'm afraid a 10's going to be just a bit too low to hit this wolf. Damn As it. you grow these small claws at the end of your fingers and swipe at the wolf, it dodges to the side of you. Um, still ready to pounce right back at you. Okay, well... Um... Let me at him, let me at him. That's okay, because as my bonus action, I cast Wild Shape. There we go. It's wolf time, wolf right? Form. Wolf form <laughs> is coming out. 
All right, and Sal goes back into this huge dire wolf form. Yes, uh, stay there. That he is used to holding. Twice and as I, big as the I, wolf in front of him. I fucking I look down at him and I get a fucking I'm pissed. I am my turn. All right, Bakaluda. Okay. So I need to position myself for pre precision. All right. Am I in uh, correct <laughs> in assuming that when a cone, oh, a cone is from my hands? Um, right? So that way and that way? Uh, yes, actually, there is a cone tool, I believe, here. It would be like that. See that? Ooh. A nice. little off, but yeah, something like that. Wait, so would that... Where did you get that? Uh, when you click that measuring tool, it looks like a little arrow pointing to the left, like a little carrot. I'm actually clicking from the wrong spot, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. I should be clicking from the center what? of your token. How? Yeah, that's a bit more accurate. You don't see it? So is it hitting the is it hitting Rick and is it hitting Augie is what I'm trying to figure out. No. Okay. Uh I'm using a lucky. Oh yeah? Yeah. So okay. I roll this twice. And then I pick a roll. What are, what are you what are you doing? Are you throwing a cone at him? Burning hands. All right, burning hands. Oh wait, no, I don't need to use a lucky for this. Sorry. Yeah, this is a savings throw. Yeah. So let's see. That burning hands is going to. I don't think you're going to hit more than one target in that position. I thought I would hit the bear and the wolf and him. Is that not? I can't. I don't know how to do the cone thing to check. It's close, but a cone would look more like that, which the bear and the wolf are out of. Technically, I get that wolf's butt. <laughs> uh, you know what? Yeah, if you want, you can get you can get the tail of the wolf. <laughs> You'll do a little bit less damage to him, but I'll have them both make dexterity saving throws. Tail on fire. That's the orc, and here is the wolf. Okay, I think both of them fail, which will hit them for 13 fire damage. I'm going to do 7 to the wolf. I didn't need to use Lucky, by the way. That's true, uh, because they got to make saving throws. Uh, you see Gus standing in this fire, now having this fire just thrown in his face. He's just kind of flailing his axe around, trying to put himself out as he's uh, getting a little worried being engulfed in all these flames. Is that the end of your turn? Um, can I say something? Yeah. Oh no, you stepped on the weapon! <laughs> Alright. That's it. Okay, that's gonna take us to two wolves. Uh, the two in the back specifically. Let's see where they're gonna go. Oh god. One runs right up to you, Rick. The other is gonna oh, just shit. launch forward. Right towards you, Sal. Trying to take down the dominant wolf. The one near they you, Rick, try. is going to attack first, and he will get to take advantage of his pack tactics. When he is around an ally, he gets to swing with advantage, which I think you might actually have as well, Sal. I do have that. And he does a 13 hit? Nah, 14. Okay. He, you barely managed to get out of the way of this wolf as he's about to just clamp down right onto your leg. Uh, fortunately, completely missing you. Uh, the other wolf is going to use his pack tactics on you, Sal. This time I'll click advantage and I'll have to roll twice. Uh, does 12 hit you? 12 matches my dire wolf armor class. Okay, that's definitely but a my uh, humanoid form has 16 armor class. You did say whichever one's higher. Actually, I messed up last turn, but we're gonna I'm gonna let it go. However, I'm not messing up this turn. 
For every ally <laughs> around you, you get a plus one to your attack, I believe, is how we've been doing things. So let me double check here. One. He has two allies nearby, which would equal 14. You said your highest AC is 14? 16. 16! Okay, that's still going to miss then as he tries to bite onto you, but you're, you're, you just got too, too many wolf, wolf muscles. He's trying to clamp down. You just knock right. him away. He will not be doing any damage this turn. And I need to verify something about that AC. But in the meantime, Richard, you're yeah, up. Yeah, please do. Ooh. All right, boys. Uh, well, I start yelling at the dude. I'm like, ha, ah, I told you that weapon is magical. Ha, ha, ha. And then I'm actually um, going to back up a little bit because I'm not trying to get hit by that whirlwind again. I'm going to move like right next to the sheep to kind of protect the sheep because I'm a strong, valiant guy. Hey, Sal, I'm going to protect the sheep, and then I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on myself. Wait, 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 before you do that. What's up? Are you... So if you move out of range of your target, they get a chance to swing at you one time, just a regular swing, unless you use the disengage action, in which case they can't hit you. Is that to okay. the wolf or and Gus, or just the wolf? That would be the wolf and Gus would get to do that. Well, then I'm just going to move uh, away from Gus, then, so he has a chance to swing at me. Okay, he will immediately try to do it as he swipes his great axe Wait. at you. Would he not roll with disadvantage since he just he's still trying to put himself out? Uh, you know, I'd grant you that normally, but not for this orc. Not for this trained veteran you're fighting right now who's kind of dumb, but can fight through the pain. But I think he still misses. Yep. <laughs> He swipes at you through these flames, Richard, but you ducked out just in time. You, he ha! Missed you. Can't handle the heat, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what a troll. And then I'm gonna cast Cure Wounds on myself. I'll touch myself. We're on Twitch, Rick. I mean, this is, he, can, he can touch himself to Cure Wounds. That's fine. That's, that's totally fine. Okay. As he seals up <laughs> five damage on his body. Well, I, just yell, I keep yelling at the work. Ah, fire! Scary. Then my turn. <laughs> okay. Before we go to the next turn, I, I found out the Druid thing. I'm going to go ahead and say now. So, all of your stats, except for... I think it's whatever your spellcasting ability is, or whatever your wild shape form says you get to keep, would revert to the beast's attributes. So, your strength would go way okay. up, or intelligence way down or an AC would match whatever the yeah. beast is okay so moving forward got we, it we can go off that all right Arthur oh I just remembered something is my bless still up from the last battle or is it gone it would be gone now hey all right um so anyways I noticed that my carrot my uh, my fellow members are playing with fire so I'm gonna play with fire as well and cast sacred flame on Gus which is a cantrip. Okay, he has to make another dexterity savings throw here. Which oh, he passes with flying colors. In the midst of these flames, he avoids the holy flame coming down from above just barely. Almost on accident. Ah, oh, come on, God. All right, um, other than that, oh, God. I want to play safe here. I'm going to roll, I'm gonna roll with my dice here and back away from Gus as well. Okay, um, if you do, if with that, uh, and since you already used an action, you can't take the disengage action. The wolf and Guz will get a swing at you. Oh, the wolf and the wolf is actually near me. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Shoot. Let's see. All right, I'll stay there and hold my ground. Okay. Other than that, oh, I got one. Then I got. Well, that's that's it for my turn then. All right. And also keep in mind there are other actions y'all can take that you might not be aware of. One's called the the dodge action. If you're in melee range and you haven't used your action, you can force everything that attacks you to have disadvantage by default. It's kind of like uh, tank mode. If ever you're stuck in a spot and can't don't know what to do, just just trying to help out. But since I already cast Sacred Flames, I can't do dodge. That is correct. All right. Well, but for next a... time, now you know. Yes. Thank you. All right. Cool. That would be the end of round one, which means our sheep gets to take a turn, as it uh, it's in panic mode right now. It sees all of its uh, trackers edging in on it, and it starts kind of cowering back a bit as it moves towards the tree and tries to start hiding under it. 
And uh, now I will bring three enemies up here with a wolf, the orc, and a bear. We'll start with a wolf because it's nice and simple. He's going to try to bite you, Sal, with his pack tactics, so he has advantage. And that is a critical bite as this thing just... It gets past your wolf muscles this time. Gets the sweet tender spot. And bites you for nine damage. Next will be Guz, who is probably going to whirlwind again. Let's see. Um, uh, would you say that's an attack towards me? Uh, actually, yeah. You'd be one of his targets. All right. I'm going to lucky his... <laughs> Attack roll, which so, means that he rolls two dice, Okay. and I get to pick which one. Is it that one or that one? <laughs> we're gonna go. <laughs> we're gonna go with the seventeen because it's slightly lower. Okay, he uh, does this arcing swing again. He can't hit three targets though; he can only hit two. As he strikes you, Baka, and you, Arthur, both for ten slashing damage. Sorry, oh, guys. here, let me link the lucky thing just so you know what it is. That's fine. Uh, oh. I don't know how to link it. All right, while you're figuring that out, Richard, roll a 1d4, please. Uh, yeah, one sec. Also, we can delete this code, too. Uh... Did you get that? I do not see Why a 1d4. Why does that, that work? Oh, there uh... you go. Uh, came up as a one. I see oh. that on D and D Beyond, but I don't see it on. I see it. Tabletop. I see Lucky. Not Lucky. Uh, my no, roll. Rex roll. Uh, yeah, you have to. I think you have to type it in on Foundry for it to go through. Oh, uh, um, okay. So just one D four. Yeah. <laughs> Slash roll. One D four. <laughs> Richard says one D four. There we go. Okay. So. After he does this whirlwind, you can see Guz kind of hopping around still, and it looks like his, it almost looks like uh, his skin might be burned a little bit, but it's, it's, all, it's all in his mind. It's not real, as he takes four more damage from standing near that morning star. Wait, what do you mean it's not real? He did take fire damage. Yeah, and his brain, no, for... like his brain no. got damaged. No, I threw a fucking fireball in his face. <laughs> Oh, the, the fire true. hands. Yeah, you you did do yeah. that fire damage. So there are there are those burn marks, but not the the ones Rick Richards making. They're fake, They're phonies. And Guz will now hop out of that. Wait, spot. did I take did I take ten damage? Um, yes. Do I have the option to swing at him with advantage since he moved out of my range? You do. Okay. As long as you have your reaction available and an enemy moves out of range, you can always take an opportunity attack unless they have something that negates it. But that would override like a normal action, right? No, reaction's its own separate thing. Well, then I want to fucking swipe at his ass. Bite him. Yeah. Uh, where the fuck is that? Is that spellbook? No. I'd be features? under features. Yeah. It kind of has and little bag icons. I got pack tactics. That's right. So you have advantage on it when you roll it. Normal and normal okay that second one will absolutely hit go ahead and roll the damage Ooh, very good as you he is guys is starting to move away from that fire you lean in real fast to this nice open clearing with no fire whatsoever and just <laughs> take a huge chop out of his shoulder as he's backing away for 10 damage i believe something else happens when you land a hit with your bite as a dire wolf right um I don't remember actually. Let me see here. Uh, I don't know why it doesn't show on the token. Oh, it doesn't. Um, nope, That's it's weird. just piercing damage. Well, it should be on the token, but I don't know why it's not. But you definitely do. Um, anytime you land a hit with your buy as a dire wolf, your target has to make a strength savings throw, or you rip them oh. to the ground. I do see that up there on the one that I linked 58 seconds ago. And he is going to go ahead and make that strength savings throw real quick. He has to beat a 12, which he doesn't. As he's moving away, 
and you rip on his shoulder and pull back. He loses his balance and you rip him straight down onto his back. He is now prone in front of you, Richard. Nice. Hell yeah. Stay that way until his turn, so. Oh, this was his turn, so he's he's uh, in a bad spot as he moves out of the way of uh, those fake flames, but he's now on the ground. That's the end of his turn. And I'll bring us to the big brown bear, who not a lot of room for him to move in with all those wolves in the way, so he's got to start skirting around. As he, you see a huge bear approaching you, Richard, it's going to start laying into you because this guy has multi-attack. He's going to try to bite you and claw you. Hell yeah. Oh. This well. bear latches onto <laughs> you and deals 10 piercing damage. Oh boy. It's been real, y'all. Uh, How do I delete this bitch? But you're still... Oh, uh, you gotta click the little ruler icon and then highlight the little star or fancy explosion icon and press delete. Okay, second attack on you, Rick. Them claws, he sees you still standing, but fortunately, even though you've got blood pouring out of every other spot on your body, you're able to just barely get out of the way of these claws before they strike you down. Sal, you're up. All right, I'm attacking this guy. Okay. Also, did you figure it out, Kim? Marco? Yep. Excellent. Yeah, I did. Um... You would get, uh, I think you advantage. get advantage. Because as long as if you're near an ally, then you get advantage. They don't have to be near another ally. Okay. So, yeah, you can uh, roll again and see if you get a crit. Oh, you, you clicked advantage already. Never mind. I did click advantage, yes. Okay, good. Uh, that will definitely hit. Roll that bite damage. Uh, da, 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 da. No, I just lost it. There it is. Okay, you reach over this wolf with your maul and just clamp onto the back of its neck and just squeeze. And you bite so hard. This thing, you, you almost have its spine lashed in your mouth as you crush it. And this, this thing right. immediately goes limp on the ground in front of you. That is one wolf down. So seeing this wolf die... Can I try and intimidate the second one next to me? Intimidation would be an action. So Damn it. Next time around, you could try. All right, I'm just growling at him, then I'm, I'm pissed. <laughs> All right. I'm you, you, end my turn. You growl at the nearby wolf. Yep. Uh, Baka. Burning hands. Okay, you got a nice squad lined up here. So you're barely going to miss Richard, who is bleeding profusely. But you're going to hit three <laughs> targets. And uh, what's his name's prone, so... Go ahead and link uh, d link your burning hands. <laughs> oh, my. Nice. Oh. Okay. So, Good. Guz will have to make the save with disadvantage. So, we'll go ahead and start with him. Okay, so that's one fail. Then we'll go ahead and do the wolf. They're pretty dexterous. Mm, just barely... Does it... I gotta double check and see if that works or not. I'm gonna do the bear. Bear is not dexterous. God damn it, they both fucking rolled it. Okay. <laughs> uh, let me double check and see because I forget on savings throws if they meet it, if they succeed or not. How to succeed a savings throw. Rick? What? Wait, wait. We lost camera? your camera, bud. Again? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So annoying. Hey, while he's checking that, let's talk strategy. Because I know it's illegal. Do I heal myself again, or do I go balls in and try to poke this guy's you eyes out? You gotta save yourself. You're gonna fucking die. Okay. <laughs> well, if he, try he he has to heal himself. If he doesn't, the bear's gonna bite him. Yeah, you gotta do something. Like, you're in, you've got three of them in your sight. Yeah. Okay. Jamie can either be real cool or it's about to suck dick. Meeting it is a success for a savings throw. So they don't take damage. Uh, they take half damage, I believe. No, they take half. That's because Gus oh, okay. is taking the front of it. 
true. Guz is taking a full 14 on the ground as he had just escaped flames and now he's engulfed in some more as he takes 14 fire damage. The other two Ooh. will take seven. Uh, you almost incinerated that wolf and the bear is still standing pretty strong. That bear take, oh, I should say that bear take any damage. <laughs> no, he's the boss. <laughs> take a little bit, a little bit. And to turn Baka. I'm going to take this opportunity to back up. Um, okay. And I know the repercussions. Sure, well, he can't swipe it. Use on the ground. He yeah, can, he's prone. but it'll be disadvantaged. You can you can still attack while on the ground. Um. Okay. Wait, where is uh? Oh, there we go. Boop. Okay. Uh, as you start to move away, Guz just has his axe in one hand. He'll try to swipe at your ankles to see if he can catch you. Would you say this is an attack towards me? Absolutely. Lucky. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't about to die. <laughs> oh. I didn't even need it. God damn it. All right. It's okay. Check this out. We'll make this cool because he crit failed. So... He swipes at you as hard as he can, Baka. And you actually, you saw him cocking his arm back just before you started whoop, retreating. Whoop, 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 whoop. And as he hurls Makes his noise, axe in your noises. direction, he loses his grip on it as it almost slides right into your ankles, but you do a short hop, land on the blade, and go sliding back about 15 feet. Ha ha! Oh yeah. So you still have uh, all your movement. And he's unarmed. And he is unarmed. This is my axe now! You went, Get up! Went axe surfing a little bit. That's pretty fucking cool. Is that the end of your turn, Baka? Yeah, that's the end of my turn. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hold on. Did it put my. Yeah, I used my spell. Okay. Just making sure it used my spell. Your cone's still out there, too. Also. Um, are we counting that as me using a lucky? Even though I didn't have to use it? Um. I, I think that's know. how it I has to work. That. Because you had. When you proclaim it, it means you're you're using it before you know the effect. So if you proclaimed it, well, are, actually, does it say you can proclaim it after the roll? Uh, you can choose to spend lucky points after you roll the die, but before the outcome is determined. Okay, so then in that case, you would still have your lucky because I mean it was a, clearly a crit fail, so you wouldn't have used the lucky no matter what. I'm going to delete your cone here. Now our wolves are going to go, which one of these wolves is going to... Let's see, what's he going to do? Which wolf is it? Uh, the, this one right here. He's going to try to bite you, Arthur. He has no Damn. pack taxes this time, however, because he's all by himself. Um, but yep. if 15 will... How is... Something... How is your armor so low? Something must be weird there. Check that out later. But yeah, that, that's a hit. It looks like as he's going to bite you for eight piercing damage. I mean, my armor is only 13. Yeah, but he's a cleric. They wear like chain mail and have shields and stuff. I don't know. We'll figure it out later. <laughs> yeah, I might have messed up somewhere, but let's keep going. The other wolf, uh, Richard, you are surrounded. Even though one of your enemies is on the ground, this guy, it will be up biting you with some pack tactics. Hi, right, boys. <laughs> which, oh, shit. which will land for six damage as you your thigh gets ripped up by this wolf just pouncing onto you you are oh, now no. unconscious you are not dead yet so you're going uh, to, to a state where you have to roll death saving throws and I'll tell you how to do that in a minute actually I'll tell you how to do it right now because it's your turn so when you subtracted your health on D&D Beyond, it should have turned into some weird new thing, yeah? Richard? Yo, my internet hey. just went out as soon as you tried to explain <laughs> that. Sorry. Oh, God. Oh, I thought that was my internet for a second. Um, so you, when you subtracted your HP, it should be replaced by some new weird interface, uh, face, yep. right? 
daily receives, yep. So if you click that, um, you'll see three slots for uh, successes and three slots for failures, and in between that, a little D&D &D Beyond icon, like a D20 with a two on it, something like that. Yeah. Click that D&D &D Beyond die. Little, yeah, there you go. Okay, and that should have auto-updated as a failure. So... Uh, I didn't, but I'll just do that. Okay, well, if you get three of those, you're dead dead. If you get a critical fail, it counts as two failures. If you get a critical success, which is 10 or above, that counts as two successes. So just make Dead sure not boys. to get three of those. Arthur. Also, I should go ahead and tell you this. Even though a player is unconscious or down making death saves, if they get a heal, they automatically get up. So they don't have to make those savings throws anymore. I'm kind of out of bind here to heal myself or heal Richard. I mean, I know what I I want to, I want to cast Sacred Flame skin. You know what? But I only got ability one ability left. You should heal somebody. Yeah, but I only got one spell ability left. That's that's the problem. Unless I could use the level two ability. Yeah, it's true. You can upcast your heals as well. Okay. But that is your choice. What would Arthur do? I want to... So what I want to do is I want to cast Sacred Flames again onto Gus. Knowing my luck, it probably won't hit. And I just failed a, I just failed a roll, and then I want to do a bonus action, which was going to hit heal Richard. But what I also can do is I can also heal myself, use a level 2 ability, and heal Richard. Choices, choices. I'm just trying to think which would be the better outcome. Which, going by Arthur's history, we're going to do this. I will cast Cure Wound on myself, level 1. Big heal. You heal for 13 damage. And then I am going to cast Healing Word level 2 onto Richard. Which is considered as a bonus action, actually. That is correct. I'm All back, right, wow. baby. And you get healed for 13, get Richard. Healed. You bounce up. Uh, you're, you're laying prone on the ground currently, but you are among the living and conscious at the moment, surrounded by three uh, deadly enemies. <laughs> All right, cool. So I say this, we're not out yet. Boom. <laughs> very and good. I'm done. Very good turn. Uh, that'll take us to a, that's a dead wolf. Uh, Guz. Guz will get back onto his feet, grunting. And uh, as he's getting up, he hoists his axe up and just says, should have just given me the damn sheep. And I he, thought he was unarmed. Oh, did you nope. miss a sheep turn? He is unarmed. He is unarmed, that's correct. So, instead of raising an axe in his hand, he has a fist uh, raised in the air. Doesn't the sheep do anything? Uh, the sheep is cowering. It's not going to do anything once it went to that tree. If, in oh. fact, when it sees Baka approach, it looked like it was about to run away, but it's kind of just huddling down now. Uh, he cannot do his whirling axe because he has no axe right now. So he's just going to do a hard punch. And let's see. Don't die, Richard. Mod. <laughs> oh, I'm done. I, I said don't. Little darkness, my old friend. <laughs> Rick. Idiot. Rip. Rick. He tries to punch you right when you wake up, Rick. And as his fist is coming down, you just you quickly roll to the side as it lands with a thud right in the dirt next to you. Idiot. That's all he's going to do for now. <laughs> but this brown bear will absolutely brown. try to take a foe on the ground. He's going to start <laughs> biting and clawing at you. God damn this. I hate this brown bear. Oh. <laughs> Richard, old wounds become older wounds as this bear rips into you again with its bite. 
but fortunately just misses you with its claws. That's all it's gonna do. Sal! I, I'm... I'm biting this one. Ooh, take him down. You got your pack tactics. Yep. yep. Oh, that is absolutely gonna hit. For eight damage. That almost takes this wolf down oh, as you just it. rip into it. Its left shoulder is almost just hanging off its body, but it's just kind of limping and standing up still. Um, I don't think my wolf has any bonus actions, actually. No. I end my turn. Uh, that wolf is also on the ground prone now as you uh, shoved it Oh, down. yes. That's great. Nice. Baka. Fireboat. Oh, a fireboat? Okay. <laughs> fireboat. Later, Richard. <laughs> On uh, our happy go lucky orc friend. Uh, wait a minute. I want to do a lucky. Okay. Give me something better. You son of a bitch. Um, I'll take that 13. Okay. You throw a fireball that looks like it's about to nail Guz, but just goes right in between him and Richard mm. and flies off into yeah. the distance. Yeah. And as soon as he, he sees this, he yeah. actually he actually turns and uh, looks at you. Uh, I just kind of, like, point at his axe. <laughs> like, step oh, on it you. a little bit. Are you yeah. taunting him? Okay. <laughs> End of your turn? Yeah. Alright, that's going to take us to both of our wolves. One of which will try to strike Richard, who's still on the ground. Doesn't have a chance to get up, just getting onslaughted. And he will get bit oh. again for five damage. Hello. Oh, does my <laughs> he goes unconscious again. Um, on your turn, you will have to make death saves again, Richard, but you're, you're okay for the moment. The other wolf the... is going to try and bite you, Arthur. Again? God dang it. I thought he'd be more mad at us. A... He's prone, Ow. though, right? So he'll have disadvantage. That's true. Um, he will stand yep. up using half of his movement to do this. So, oh, I don't know if I told y'all that. When you are prone on your turn, you can get up, and it costs 15 feet of movement, which, because I think most of y'all are 30 feet. So whatever half your movement is is how you stand most. up. I see. Okay. Yeah, okay. Most. Arthur, you get bit for five piercing damage. Damn. And Richard, I need you to Yo. make a death savings throw. Can I use inspiration on the death saving? You know what? Yeah, yeah. If you if you want to, go ahead. Okay, well that is definitely a success. So you now have one success out of the three you need. Two more, and you will gain one hit point and wake up. Don't go towards the light, <laughs> Arthur. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna cast Sacred Flames on the goddamn wolf because this is the second time he bit me. All right, it's got to make a dex savings throw, which it fails as this radiant flame just blasts this wolf. And it actually has a lot more punch than it looked like as it slams into above this wolf. It knocks him to the ground flat. And as he lifts his head slowly, like he's about to try to bite you again, but the life just leaves out of him as his head falls onto the ground. Ooh, gross. Alright, cool. I, I I look at Arthur and my tail starts wagging. I'm a happy uh, boy. Man, we made a horrible turn. We went from trying not to kill anyone to fucking murdering these bitches. Is is Gus able to still take a swing at me if I try to move? Uh yes, he still has his reaction available. 
Well, he would punch you. Yeah. Yeah, he just he bah, go for go for fisty cuffs. All right. Um. God dang it. I want to try. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my chances here. Since he's just going to punch me, I'm just going to, like, move. Dude, that's a good spot to move. Back here. Okay. He will try to swing with a left hook on you. Uh, but completely whiff. As he's just uh, a little bit slow right now with all the wounds he's taken. All right, cool. And apparently I actually have another second ability spell left. Is that correct? I have one more second level spell open, is that correct? You should have had only one level one and one level two when we started, which you've used one of both. Okay, cool, so I was off somewhere. I just wanted to make sure I was reading that correct. I had my turn. Okay. Uh, that will be the end of the round, which will give our sheep some action here. Um, it starts looking up and sees more uh, these wolves down and Guz looking wounded. As he looks to you, Baka, and uh, starts to say, "Yes, you you can take take them down. Please, please protect me." And as he's saying this, um, Guz is actually crouching down a bit and starts rushing straight at you, Baka. Richard, you'll be able. Actually, you're you're unconscious. Never mind. Arthur, you'll be able to swing at Guz as he's lunging over towards well, Baka. Uh, what would that count as? Like inflict wound on 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 strike. Do you have a mace or anything like that? Quarter staff. It would be uh, your quarter staff trying to bop them. And that is a wow. That's actually a really successful bop. As he's running by, you just quickly pelt him right on the neck. He actually starts choking a bit as he's rushing forward, but it doesn't slow him down. As he not only lunges at you, Baka, he's leaping at you. It looks like he's trying to grapple you to the ground. I need oh, you to would make. Would you say that is an attack? towards me yes give him a big old all kiss. right what do i need to make you need to make an acrobatics or an athletics check whichever one's higher versus his Ooh. Uh, wait what did what did he roll oh i'm lucky if i need it Okay. As he's running at you, you crouch down and get ready. He lunges at you, full body in the air, like he's about to just grapple you and go rolling on the ground. And you duck just low enough to where he goes sailing over your head and rolling past you. Uh, he hastily gets back to his feet, just almost growling as he's looking at you and then his axe that uh, you're standing on. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that'll be the that'll be the end of his turn. <laughs> Next will be our brown bear, who, uh, in most cases, seeing their foe on the ground like this would start the uh, process of maiming them. But this brown bear is a little different for reasons y'all don't know. And it just walks over Richard straight into you, Arthur, and starts biting and swinging. Oh. Um, the gods are with me. <laughs> roll an attack roll for your quarter staff. Would that be? Would that just like hit uh, quarter staff again? And just hit the B. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this bear is coming in to bite you, Arthur, and you hastily get ready and hold it out, almost like a spear. And as his mouth's coming down, you shove that quarter staff right into his maw on the side of his face, almost piercing through his cheek as he reels back in pain, taking eight damage. He will still, however, try to swipe you with his claws, which will connect with you for 15 oh. slashing damage. Ooh, that's, that's almost down. I'm almost down. That was a good parry, though. Good, good first parry. Well, that's a six and a five. Holy crap. Sal, you're up. Well, um... God damn it. Uh, I have to move up. Go oh, what the hell? Wolf. 
two Double tokens. wolves! <laughs> <laughs> I cast a mirror image! <laughs> And I want to attack the fucking bear. Now you were just trying uh, to kill all my friends. That other wolf's supposed to be dead down there. Is there? Hold on to me. Yeah, okay, the one that I'm. Dead. Yeah, yeah, he's dead. All right, go ahead and bite this bear. All right. <laughs> um, advantage because Augie is still standing next to me. Ooh. Oh, yes, you're going for the throat. Let's see the damage on this. When you click damage, click critical. 18. Wow. So, okay. So this... I'm pissed. This bear, you already poked him through the through the cheek with your quarterstaff, Arthur, and then he, you got slashed. And then the bear started to stand on its hind legs as it was about to come down at you again with another slash. You see Sal just leap at this thing's throat, standing just as tall as it, and just ripping his head back and forth until finally he rips this thing's throat out. And it falls to the ground. <laughs> Mm. I, I think I need mm. therapy after that. <laughs> I need some has a taste for blood. Pets. Yes, I <laughs> I'm do. I need therapy. I just saw the no. gruesome death of my life. Now I'm looking at this wolf. This wolf's in my fucking sights. I'm, I'm pissed at him. It's like fucking Growling blood at him. and like guts. <laughs> all over my face. Yeah. I have blood all over me. And I, I end my I turn. Mean, Augie was in the splash zone, so... He was! <laughs> Alright, that's gonna take us to Bakaluda. Hey, you're, you got a little bit of blood on you for sure, Arthur. No. It's alright, don't worry. I can I can help you later with that. Alright, my turn? Uh -huh. I need a new wardrobe. <laughs> Did I see what happened uh, behind me? I would I would almost argue you're probably more focused on Guz since you just tried to lunge okay. at you, but if you could say you were, if that's truly the case. Did he see what happened behind me? Absolutely, he's looking that way. Uh You probably heard what happened. Yeah, definitely yeah. heard it. Just had the bad died. <laughs> uh I charge up. <laughs> Burning hands. <laughs> and I'm aiming it right at Gizboy. Okay, he has to make a dexterity savings throw, and he succeeds. Oh. So only take half of that, which will be five oh, damage. Damn it, that wasn't towards me. Alright, that's fine. You can quit at any time! End of your turn? Yeah. Okay. That's gonna bring us to... The only living wolf that will turn to a very red-faced Sal Dire Wolf. <laughs> it's going to have to make a check here real quick. Let's see, what would that be? Do this one. Okay. Uh, this wolf, seeing you covered like that, starts to actually back away, Sal, which gives you an opportunity to attack. I'm swiping at him. Is that with advantage? Um, yeah, you have uh, Arthur still next to you, so yeah. Okay, roll your damage. <laughs> this wolf looks at you, and you can see the fear in his eye a bit, and your predatory instinct just kicks in. The moment hit one of his front feet just step back once. With lightning speed, you lunge forward and crush his entire maw in your huge maw. Goddamn right. This wolf definitely hits the ground and stops moving. Little pups. You fuck with my friends. And that's it. That's the wolf's turn. Richard! Literally pick out the whole squad. <laughs> I need you to make another uh, death savings throw. Hell yeah. No success. You got two. You just need one more and you'll be up. I think it's looking all pretty for old Richie. Listen to build. Hold on. I'm not entirely sure if I can actually use this ability. I'm gonna post it in the in the chat log real quick. Sure. Okay. Channel divinity. Any creature in 30 feet, you divide hit points among them equal to five times a quick. Yes, you can. Uh, that is a feature, and you can use it once, I think, for now. But later on, you get to use it more. So if you want to cast that, it doesn't take a spell slot at all. You can just use it. 
Oh, cool. Um, it says I can divide my spells. Uh, you can divide hit points equal to five times your cleric level. So your level right now is four, so you have 20 hit points. You can dish out however you want amongst all your allies. Or, I want to dish out... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, or you could do all on one person or most on one person, just any, any way you want. I want to split it between me, Richard, and Baka. Okay. How many is each of you get? I'm trying to figure the math out here right now. So we're level four. It's like almost um, six six points, right? That will equal. Yeah, you would have two left over. Give the extra to the Baka. Yeah, I'll get, no, I'll throw it to you actually. Okay. I'll so, yep. Richard, you heal for eight. Arthur heals for six, and Baka, you heal for six. As Arthur holds his arms out and channels this holy energy that just seeps in all three of you. Guys, I had the craziest dream. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> That's the end of your and turn, then, Arthur? Nope, I'm gonna cast my, my cantrip spell again. Sacred Flames at Gus. Now, Channel Divinity is an action. So oh, you, it is? You wouldn't be able to use oh. a cantrip still. Ah, okay, shoot. All right, nah, I'll just, I'll just, um, I'll just get on my knees and just witness what I just saw. All right, you, you take in all the violence against animals around you. <laughs> uh, that would bring us to the sheep, who, after seeing Guz leap at you, Baka, again gets frightened and starts kind of just running a bit as far as it can away. Which would actually bring us to Guz who is looking bloodied, seeing the sheep run, and then looks to you again, Baka, and it looks like he's uh, trying to make a Hail Mary play here as his only way out, as he rushes towards you again and tries to grapple you. Would you say that this is an attack towards me? It is an attack towards you. Oh, okay. Lucky. How many luckies do you have? Because I know you've used two. I've only had to. I've only had to reroll twice. Like we haven't done the reroll. I thought but according you... to you, if I didn't use it, I had it still. Oh. I have three, by the way, and I've used two. Oh, well, yeah, that's exactly what I just said. Okay, so all right, yes. he's trying to get you again. I need you to make an acrobatics or athletics uh, roll. Where's his uh, athletics? I didn't have to use my lucky. Okay, he comes up to you again. <laughs> he holds his arms out as he's yelling, Come here, you little shit, come here! As he starts reaching and trying to grab onto you. But being as small as you are, you're able to just duck and dodge out of the way every time he tries to get Whoop. a hold of you. Dodge, duck, and dive, and dodge. Um... Alright. Sal, you're up. All right, well, I am going to move up towards the wolf. The orc? Yes, the, the orc. The, <laughs> the wolf. The wolf orc. <laughs> He's half orc, half wolf. <laughs> I didn't select both of those, I'm sorry. And um, I would like to bite him non-lethally. Yeah, you did it. Non okay, non-lethal bite. All right, and uh, I get an advantage because pack tactics. Mm -hmm. That will hit for ten damage. Okay, so you uh, hobble. Uh, you don't hobble. You rush around Baka as you see Guz trying to just grab a hold of her. It looks like he's trying to like almost get her in a chokehold, but. As soon as he sees you, he turns to you for just a moment. As you clamp onto his neck and squeeze with just enough pressure to render him unconscious. As he takes that damage, but he is not dead and falls onto the ground with his eyes closed. That's going to take us out. Yeah, we did it. I'm just still sta standing at the bear in a gaze. <laughs> Well, do I have 
Are you trying to cook some bear tonight, Baka? You gonna skip this bad boy? Do you want me to? I'll do it. Hell yeah. I just start mumbling. <laughs> I pull... I don't know what I'm uh, hold on, let me see how much... Do we have more room? I don't have any left on me. Um, Wait, I have... Who's rope I have did 50, we use? I have 50 feet of rope. Whose rope did we use, though? It was my rope. Okay. But I just... Assumed that I should have probably just held on to more, but I guess like I just threw it away after I used it, like the 50 feet on those two dudes. Um, well, I think we should tie this guy up first. Okay, well, I can't pick him up, you gotta drag him. Why not just kill him? Just be done with it. I want to see what's in his pockets first. Why does he need to be killed? He tried to capture me. He he was going to take me back. He'll come at me again. And he'll be defeated again. And the the sheep oh, has you a help me, uh, very help me worried this guy expression, up? but he's just standing there, didn't say anything. I mean, no offense, you're fluffy and all, but I don't know much about you. Yeah, you could be a bad sheep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the sheep actually raises his head when you uh, say that and says, if, if you haven't heard of me, it's it's your own shortcoming. My knowledge knows no bounds. Stay with I, um, me out of town. I, um, I get up on my legs and I run. I just march towards the sheep and I yell at him because of you, I, we had to kill these motherfuckers. Uh, Sorry for the language. They d deserved it! I don't care. What is it that they deserve to, the, to die? Treachery! I just walk I'm away. Piss I'm angry reason. at him. Yeah, how descriptive. Alright. Uh, Titus, since Gus was uh, knocked out, can I go through his up. pockets? Yeah, you can go through his pockets. Yeah, but what I want to tie him up. Um, you find about... He had about 10 gold on him. Oh, um, yeah, bro. His great axe is under Baca's feet. And, uh... Other than that, it just looks like a few random personal belongings. Like, he had some dice on him. A uh, piece of I'll empty parchment. Well, you can add some... You can add some playing dice to your inventory. Anyone want to help me tie this guy up? Yeah, I'm helping you. All right, we tie him up next to the tree, or on the tree, I should say. Well, I mean, you're gonna have to drag him. Hey, give me a second. I gotta steal his dice first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll do All it. Right. Uh, I'll do this tree over here, I guess. Yeah. So... What I'm are helping. we doing? Up. Up. Okay. Is there anything worth valuable on him that I could take? I took his. I uh, he had some dice and gold. And I'll take the gold. Mm, okay. That I, uh, you know, almost died twice back there. I think I deserve to get paid. You hey, Sal, I'll split it that. with you and give you some tobacco. How does that sound? Okay. Up, my my, ta my tail starts wagging. No. <laughs> I'm down with the tobacco. Uh. Alright, so that guy's tied up. Alright, Mr. Sheep, before we make lamb chops tonight, you gotta tell us what the heck's going on. I start pacing around them. Yes, yes, I, I can tell you my story. The, the before we were interrupted by these m malicious hunters. Um, as I told you, my name is Finithir Shinebright, and I am a, a wizard of no small talent. I specialize in transmutation magic and my most prized possession it was used against me I was not always a sheep which should be obvious but a wand of true polymorph was used against me by one of my apprentices 
I awoke you from a... Oh, w what? You said you're a master of transmutation? What is it that you worked on? Magic involving transferring living creatures, inanimate objects, turning one thing into a different thing, essentially. Enhancing weaponry, magics, many transmutations. Did you work on live animals? He looks down at the, the dead bear next to him and says, I never turned any humanoid into a creature, but Noak seemed completely okay with the process. This one was a mercenary he had hired. Uh, Baka canceled that bear meat tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I, um, I was Sorry. actually meditating when uh, my apprentice was standing over me once I awoke and clutching my wand. When I demanded to know what he was doing, all I could do was bleat angrily. It was too late. He had transformed me. I have been a prisoner in my own wizard tower and garden forced to eat nothing but grass and buttercups. Not too bad. That's horrible! <laughs> but I can tell you this. Last night, that was the first night in many months he left home without closing the door. I snuck to an old bookshelf in my tower and took the scroll that allowed me to speak with you that your wizard used. That's when I rushed into town with the scroll, just looking for anyone to help, but no one had a magical aura or anything. And Alexi was missing! I know what happened to him, but that's when I found you. Well, we're What's the name of your apprentice? Which one? I have or had two. Uh, the one that turned you. Mm, that was Noak. An OKE? Mm hmm. And what about your other apprentice? What was his name? I... Uh, he was the town's guardian mage. Um... Well, Alexi. Well, he gone. Turned, yes. a, turned a bunch of uh, wolves into intelligent creatures. But, but they're our friends. He was practicing too, like that. Yeah. But he gone. I need to pick my apprentices better. Yeah, but we got some cool wolves now that are friends. Uh, could could they could you they help? You want to meet them? I I mean, eat, uh, meet them. Wait. Not your you meat, but do you, you want to meet them? them? Wait, no, 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 no. It, that is a bad <laughs> idea. I won't go. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding, sheepy boy. Yeah, wolves and sheep. Come on, I'm pretty sure they'll be good friends. Just like look at me. Sal over there. Does he I'm look gonna like start you? Over there. Can any of y'all dispel magic? Um, let's see. <laughs> You're just following him around, so. The sheep's scared. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, he's a kind, gentle wolf. He's like a teddy bear. He's, he's actually like a loving bear. Death, And you're saying this? <laughs> <laughs> like, there's literally blood and, like, guts from in the entrails from this fucking giant bear that he killed. And you're like, actually, no, he's friendly. He's totally friendly. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that bear was the first taste of blood he's had in a while. I, I go through. I'm about to puke. I I wanna I wanna lay down, and and show those to show the sheep my belly. I wanna go over and pet him. Oh, good boy. I go over and rub Sal's belly too. My tail starts smacking the ground. I saw your friend transform, so I know he's not a real wolf, but I I will not go near any wolves, talking <laughs> or not. What do you mean, not a real wolf? I saw him transform. Druidic magic, I believe. Sal can be whatever he wants to be. It's 2022, or whatever year it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. It is currently uh, 1495. It's 1495. 
Or all did right. you forget that with all the time you spent eating buttercups in the grass? Hey, I think this uh, might be a good uh, time to take a break. I need to go to the bathroom. You take a break? Okay, yeah. we can take a break. We're going to do right, a 10-minute break. Go to the bathroom, get some drinks and whatnot. We'll be back soon. Don't go anywhere. I was going to say, can we take a short rest? Mm, we'll figure that out during the break. All right. What's up, sheepy boy?
we're back Ugh. hello hello welcome back um <laughs> right where we left off yeah you guys uh what were you doing um i got some chocolate no not on the break what are you doing now in game oh. <laughs> i'm still laying on my back you got shine bright he can you can talk to him some more or you guys uh can go back to town live? Or... yeah 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 we're back uh, i was supposed to I don't want to take a short rest. Oh, that's right. We How far away for, are we from town? Uh, you guys were on the cusp of town. I can actually show you here. Let's see. Activate this page. Um, you guys are... Well, you're not that far off at all. You're right around this area. Oh. Oh, wow. So, right next to the house? Uh, that has a little more out in the woods, but yeah, you guys are close. To, you were at a crossroads where you ran into uh, Guz and his crew. So it's up to you guys. Do you want to take a short rest before going back into town, or do you want to head back in? I think well, we should we just... just go to town. Yeah, we should go to town. All but right, you can't, can you can't on... hear me say that because I'm in wolf form. Can I take a ride on um, Sal's back <laughs> just, to, just to rest a little bit? That's up to him. I don't know how heavy are you. Oh, um, uh, I mean, in the amount of distance that we have to go, you're not going to get much. Well, hold up, hold up. Do we want to talk to this? Do we, do we want to try to wake up this work guy? Oh yeah, I forgot about him. <laughs> Let's see. Um. So he's tied to the tree, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, so, you want to talk to us? Talk to the sheep first. Actually, let's continue talking to the sheep real quick, and then we'll talk to the guest. So I go up to uh, Sheepy Boy, and I'm like, "So, what happened the night that you turned into the sheep? You said that he did, your um, your apprentice approached you into your chamber and started and transformed you. When I awoke from my meditation, he used my wand on me, and I need it back to fix this." Is there any other way to fix it? The sheep shakes his head. A wand of true polymorph is one of the most powerful wands in existence. It doesn't turn someone to look like something. It turns them into something permanently. But you're still able to keep all your mental sharpness, cognitive abilities, right? My intelligence is unchanged, correct? So it didn't 100% turn you into a sheep, because obviously if it were to turn you 100% into a sheep, you wouldn't have your cognitive abilities. I suppose that's true. <laughs> so as you as an expert as it as this, um, is there is there a way where you can 100% fully transmute someone into something else? Or... Because mm. what I'm trying to say is that there has to be some other kind of way to reverse it besides your wand. If you're not a hundred percent sheep, you know you still have your human intelligence. There is another way, but it would take a wizard of immense power. It just kind of flex a little bit. <laughs> it, it, while you're flexing it, uh, like nonchalantly. <laughs> well, you're someone who studied this field. Um, do you have any colleagues that you know that could probably help you get out of this situation? None that I could easily reach. Far, far away, perhaps. So our best option is to um, go back to your wizard tower and uh, get that wand back, correct? Well, we Absolutely. All right. Well, we have a couple things we have to get done first. Are we take the axe. We would be more than willing to help you. Um, obviously, there's some kind of reward involved into it, which I know you being a grand wizard shouldn't be a problem. Sure, I could do some transmutation magic to your weapons, or or offer something. What about uh, teaching our wizard friend over here some transmutation magic as well? Uh, he looks over to Baka and starts nodding quickly. Yes, no yes, thing. that would be a fair trade. <laughs> a few of my spells for my home well, and wand back. We'll talk. We'll talk about the details while we go into town. Um, there's someone I want you to meet while we're in town. But before we go, I think we're going to try to wake up this work guy and get some more information of him. 
As soon as you say that, uh, Shine Bright starts scooting around and heading over to the dead bodies and hanging out. He's coming over more closer to me? He's not even looking your way right now. He's kind of just looking towards the town. So, uh, I'm not I'm not wrong in saying that the only way we can wake this guy up is by healing him, correct? Um, either that or given enough time, he will regenerate one HP, but it takes uh, it takes a while. It take hours. So that means we could rest and he could get up, correct? Technically, yeah. It'd have to be a long rest, but yes. Guys, I have one spell slot left. I can, um, heal him. If you want to waste it on that, by all means. I mean, we're going to, we're going to town anyway. I'm not going to. I'm ready. You think boy. going to, like, bust over the ropes? I'm going to wake this, <laughs> uh, I'm going to wake this scoundrel up. If anything happens, our boy boy Sal here will bite out his throat. (laughs) Hey, who has his axe? Oh, you can carry it. Oh, also, I picked up my morning star, and it's back in my inventory. Uh, Can I make an inspection on the axe, Jamie? What are you inspecting for? Uh, Just to see the wear and tear, see if it's actually really good. Okay. Uh, Yeah, make an inspection check for me. Let's see how well you can uh, gauge this weapon. Investigation sure. is what it would be called. Investigation, there it is. Okay, you examine the great axe. It looks like it's definitely gotten some some use. There's some notches in the wooden hilt. Uh, the blade itself is cracked in certain places. Um, it looks like it's still quite durable. Definitely not new though, but it's a it's an okay great axe. Okay, probably has like a couple more uses before it finally hits the hits the deathbed. Maybe. Hey, Jamie. Hmm. I have a can I get inspiration? Oh. <laughs> can you? you what, 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 what do you need one inspiration for? He had a cat on his camera. Cat in my hand. Oh no, no, no inspiration from the the kitty cat. I'm afraid. That's bullshit. All right. Uh, as Augie or authors uh, inspect the the axe, I am gonna cast uh, my last slow slot through wounds on Gusty Boy. Okay. As soon as you release his shoulder, his eyes slowly open and he groans as he, uh, he, he tries to move his arms a bit and quickly realizes he's tied as he looks to his side and then back to you, Richard. He just says, Oh, and now I'm, thought I was dead, but here I am. And he turns to look at you, Baka, and chuckles a bit and says, You're lucky, little girly. I was going to snap your neck. Well, lucky for I just both growl of us at him. <laughs> well, you got your way. The sheep's yours. I'm tied up. What do you want? Information. Well, I'm very loyal to who I work for, so... What are you offering for it? Your life. Well, guess you best kill me then. And he raises his head. What makes you so loyal to this guy? I ain't met a man who's been as accepting of me and my kind in my whole life. No matter what you are on the outside or inside, he respects you as you. And Is I that why mean, he transforms humanoids into animals? They volunteered for it. Hmm. And why not you? You didn't want to be a big bear? Didn't need it. Up. Did you want to say something, Arthur? I'm sorry we had to kill your companions. Rest assured that I gave them a good prayer, and hopefully the spirits are in a good place. Fight's a fight. People die, people live. It is what it is. So, Noak, um, did you know, um... That's not... No, his name's Noak. Noak's your master, correct? Uh, you have the right of it. So, can you just ask, or answer this for me then? Uh, what does he want with his previous master? (laughs) Well, I can aptly tell you that. His master's a dick. (laughs) 
And he turns he turns his head past you, Lord Richard, and says, Oh, you little sheepy! Want to make others sit in the shadows while you run things how you want more? And, uh, the sheep just kind of starts cowering, kind of behind this big dare, uh, dead bear body. Well, I'm kind of interested to know about the sheepy boy as well, too, because I don't, I'll be honest with you, I don't trust them either. That's think, true. Do you have any kind of backstory of him besides him being a huge dickhead? I don't know much about him, except that he's my master's master, or was, until my master tried to take what was rightfully his. And that is? Advancement in magics. His master wouldn't give it to him. My master took it by force. Hmm. Well, that seems kind of selfish. Oh, you want to know what selfish is? And he looks you up, uh, up and down, Arthur. How long you think that sheep lives? You know, he's actually an elf. Years upon years they get to live. My master? Human. How long they live? How near as long, eh? I mean, you got a point. We humans do tend to live shorter lives than the elves. As I look over to Sal, kind of jealous. Well, tell that arsehole that he didn't take that into consideration. Letting my master dwindle till old age. Not teaching him at the pace he should. He deserves more! And uh, Guz kind of slams his elbow into the tree next to him. Well then, why not go off on his own then? I he wasn't bound to his methods. this master of his, was he? I'll never question what he chooses to do and doesn't do. I will simply obey. Which is why I need that sheep! And he struggles again on the rope. Well, oh, you're not you getting bastards. the sheep, bud. Would your master care if you're dead? He sounds like a fanatic to me. No, please, I don't want to kill him. He'd probably be pretty upset. The Anoke is real close. How close? Like, how long have you guys known each other? Years upon years, I've known Noke. Since before he started training, actually. So, you guys... So, I would say you, um... He gave you the order to fetch the sheep here um, at the tower, at the home base. You have the right of it. Okay. And you're just willing to kill any, all willy-nilly to get what you want? Willy-nilly, nonsense! He looks over to your baka. I said you had the sheep and I wanted it. I then tried to make a deal with you, and you tried to offer everything under the sun besides the sheep. And eventually... When the negotiations broke down, I simply tried to take the sheep. Don't say I didn't make an effort. Mm. Is right, your master right. always right? He kind of looks away a bit and sighs and says, it doesn't really matter if he's right or wrong. I owe him my loyalty and my life. So whatever he wishes, I will try to get. I still don't understand why you're so bonded to this guy. There has to be something that happened between you two. Maybe when I'm done writing my memoirs, I'll lend them to you and you can peruse them. Well, how about you tell me now before I slit your throat? Nah, I mean, it, I'm good with a quick gonna... death or a slow one. Take your pick. I look over to Rick and I ask him out of curiosity. I mean, it is kind of interesting to see an orc up at a magic tower hanging out with a guy for so long. It, I mean, it's or... almost like he was charmed or something. I spit on the ground. Some fool probably doesn't even know he was under influence of some kind of curse or spell. He starts chuckling a little bit. <laughs> I'm just... I'm just like, man, they have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> the wrong kinds of magics, guys. As a magic, I'd be like, come on, I'm a cleric. <laughs> All I know is holy spells. I'm a dog. Well, <laughs> way I see it, we have two options. One, leave him here. Two, take him into town. I don't think either option is good, though. Three, I put my dagger through his throat. And his eyeball. But why? 
He looks over to you, Baka, and says, Best options three, little lass. Just let him do it. I agree. Be done. Cool. Yeah, but, but why? Because if he doesn't, you leave me here. I'm gonna escape. I'm gonna try to find that sheep. I don't find that sheep. I'm gonna try to find my master. Which just sounds like you might mess with soon. And if I don't find my master, I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna have more people with me. I'm gonna try to kill you. There's your other option. Oh, are there more back? At, are there more uh, folk back at the uh, castle or the tower? Of course there are. I'm not even talking about them. I'll get whatever I can to avenge my master if something happens to him. And there's no way I can change your mind and come up with us and make a lot of money. I don't think I could ever accept money over my loyalty. I don't think he's going to become an NPC, guys. I think you're right. Yeah, I was kind of hoping we could try and actually have him come with us. All right. Maybe. Well, are you are you lot uh, finished talking to this asshole? I think we got all the information. All right. Well, then I'm going to take out my... Let's see here. I'm going to take out my flute. And I'm going to start <laughs> playing it. And I'm like... I look at you guys. I'm like, turn your head around if you don't want to see this. And I Wait, I'm, I'm already, I've already walked away. I play it's the just... sad song. I'm like, you were Admiral Repomit, the first to put me on my ass. So I'm gonna give you a proper death. And I start you, playing uh... my flute like a sad like. <laughs> As Rick is saying, playing the song, I asked the orc if there's any final wishes he wishes to say, any sins he wishes to atone to to me. Nah, just make it quick. He lifts his head right, again. I, I finish my song and I grab my uh, one of my daggers and I shove it right through his eye. Sadly, I saw that too, and I closed my eyes too late. <laughs> you shove the dagger through his eye as he uh, yells out in pain and only gets a few words off because the dagger would have sunk back into him. As he says, "I, I thought my throat, you dick," uh, and he slumps down with his head. Not moving. I've seen worse. <laughs> I'm unfazed. <laughs> I've done worse. You've done. I was about to say you've done worse. Yeah, you literally yes. covered in worse. <laughs> like you eviscerated a mercenary. <laughs> All right. Is well, it done? Well, he's yeah, gone. He's, he's he's gone. Well, I have some questions for you, stupid boy, before we head back into town. It's like I wipe off my dagger of orc blood. Oh, um, is there anything salvageable on the orc? I just started walking towards hey, town. Me, I don't, I like, don't want to be near this at all. Give me like thirty seconds. I'm ignoring uh, everything. IRL. I'll be right back. Yeah, uh, animal problems. Keep going, guys. Okay, go ahead. Okay, why would wait? Is um, can I look over the over the orc and see if there's anything I could obtain? Uh, only thing on him now is the clothes on his back. Okay. What about right, the rope? Just... Oh, and the rope, yeah. He is tied up. Well, he's dead. Yeah, I'll take him. I'll take the rope. Okay. Add a 50 foot of rope to your bag. 50 foot hemp and rope. That's my rope. You want the rope back? Yeah, give my rope. Okay. And you that. can add Sorry the rope. about that. Are you good? Uh, did I miss anything? Uh, Arthur retrieved the rope from the orc's body. Um, so before we walk, I look at the sheep. And I'm like, hey, according to Gus, you're kind of a dickhead. What's up with that? I couldn't even tell you. Why am I a dickhead? Apparently, um, you wouldn't train Noko in the advanced magic ways. I've been training Noko every day as the old ways say. What do you mean? But I guess it wasn't being done quick enough from what I heard. Impatience leads to mistakes and mistakes lead to death. How old's Noko? 
I believe he is... I believe he is in his... 50s? How old are you? Well, how old are you? Such a rude direct question, but I think maybe around 317 now? Hmm. Hey, Sal, how old are you? <laughs> I just tap my tail on the ground. <laughs> it looks like Nook was upset because obviously him as, as a human, his lifespan's not as long as you or me, us elves. And he wanted to learn as much as he could as fast as possible. But you stuck by your principles? Shortcuts are way more dangerous than expedited magics. He can mm. learn what he can and then go from there. But to do this because he was unsatisfied is absurd. I agree. Seems like you have a lot of animosity towards you towards the end of all this. It must be fixed. We must retrieve the wand from him before he does more of this. Are you able to cast uh, spells once you have the wand? Like, you'll be able to turn yourself back into a human? The sheep shakes his head and looks over towards uh, Bach and says, She will have to do it. Gotcha. You know what? I like this plan. Because if you try to betray us, Baka has the wand. And we'll turn you back into, I don't know, a uh, squirrel something. <laughs> I would prefer uh, my normal form, not a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you guys ready to head back into town? I've already, yeah. like, I've been walking towards town the entire time y'all are talking. Come on, sheepy boy. Y'all gotta Time catch to talk up to Alexi's dad. All right, so you guys make your way back into Welton. It's a little past midday now, uh, but you enter into the town. Like around five o'clock. We're going straight to the pub, right? All right, there's a legend at the top left, so you, any of those places you guys can go to. I want to go to the temple. Okay, so Arthur splits off and starts heading to the, what's it called again? It's the Temple of Pelor, which is right after you enter town, and he'll make a pit stop there. Where's everybody else going? The pub. I think we need to go to the Crook. Shepherd's Crook? Yep, right where Bacaluda's token is at. Okay, that yeah. is the pub. Uh, you guys start we made heading. our way up there. You start heading up in there and... Uh, to the pub itself, and we'll resolve uh, what Arthur's doing first. Arthur, as you enter the temple, uh, there's actually uh, not a few, not very many people in it right now. Uh, there is a young lady who seems to be just cleaning up between the pews at the moment. What would you like to do? I'd like to ask the young lady if there's a place of worship. Um, as you do, she uh, nods and gives a, a quick curtsy and just points to the altar at the front of the temple and says, if you wish to worship the Lord of Sun, and sunshine itself, then please, please, we don't get, uh, strangely, a lot of people here anymore. Ah, uh, I understand. Such a small town, not many people visiting. Blessedly to have this chapel, chapel with us. And she smiles and nods. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so then I'm gonna go over and do my little worship, uh, to, you said, Pelor? Yes. Hmm? And I just do a little offerings here and there, and I make my way up and I leave. Uh, is there anything I can grab? Are you trying to steal from the Temple of Pelor? <laughs> <laughs> Not Cecily's. Time. Maybe like a couple <laughs> candles. Uh, but there are candles around, absolutely. Okay. Uh, do I have to do anything? Uh, you would have I'm to make a to think sleight of hand check. I'll a klepto. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, slide a hand. Let's go. Okay, uh, when the woman's back is turned and she goes back to sweeping, you uh, see a few unused candles near one of the lit. Uh, they're called br braziers. Is that right? What are those little brazier? Brazers. 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 Near some brazers <laughs> in there, <laughs> uh, you're able to snatch you four unused candles. <laughs> That's illegal. Without being noticed. 
Awesome. So I take my leave, I bow to the young lady, and I leave. And I go back to the other team. And she smiles at you as you head out, and you make your way to the shepherd's crook. He's a klepto. He's a fucking klepto. Um, I, see all, I see Arthur walking back towards the, I mean, the I, pub. I, and I, I notice that he's red all over his face. Can I inspect to see why he's red all over his face? I... <laughs> Uh, Arthur, did, are you? Is there? Is your face red whatsoever? Uh, I'm a little bit embarrassed at what I did, but I did it for a good reason. Yes. You can make an insight check, Richard. <laughs> and, and Arthur, based off an 18, which is pretty good, tell Richard what he notices. Uh, I pull out. I go in my my um. I open my cloak and I just pull out a couple empty ca candles. This is. <laughs> you want some? You stole those from the church! <laughs> it's the spoils of war. <laughs> you stole those from the church! I know I'm a bad <laughs> Are there any are there any like uh town folks walking by? Uh there are a couple outside the place when you're yelling that they, they kind of give you an odd glance but keep to themselves. And I look at them. This man! <laughs> this man! I am a church a of man. God! A man who is supposed to be a follower of God. I am a follower. God told me to Save take my life. <laughs> I give him a wink. Okay, I walk. And I go and I whisper in his ear. Did you get any uh, uh, donation boxes at all? <laughs> uh, no, the donation boxes had a lock on it. Um, next time you go to that temple. Um, I, I'm very interested in learning about the sun or whatever shit you guys follow. Ah, uh, yeah. There is a pretty girl, though. You can probably enchant her. I go straight to the temple. <laughs> <laughs> no, go on. No, I have okay. a question, Jamie. Mm -hmm. uh, after my wolf form was all covered in guts and blood, I am no longer in wolf form. Am I still covered in guts and blood? No, that would have been only your wolf form. You'd look fine, actually. All right, very good. Yeah, I'm still covered right. in blood. What? He can hide a murder. That's what <laughs> I just learned. Yeah, Augie's still learned. covered in it. I can hide a murder. Uh, uh, I try I, to go into the temple. It's locked, so I come back to the pub. Or I just don't open up the door correctly. As you enter into the the shepherd's crook, um, the familiar dwarf at the bar yells out, Oh, welcome back, you lot! Now all of you are here, that's a good sign. Mission complete. Do we have a story for you? Can I oh. get a drink, please? Yeah, <laughs> I don't here. care what it is. Uh, Leoner says, uh, uh, sure, sure. I'm actually curious to hear oh. what you got to say. And, and this sheep here is not a sheep. But is a sheep, but it's not a sheep. That's a long story. You know what? That's that's actually right. Let's let's go ahead and just update that real quick. Because you guys have walked in the shepherd's crook with no instructions to the sheep who wanders in. <laughs> and uh I just it's, assumed he followed us behind. Ah, uh, sheepy boy, you hungry? When Leander sees that, she yells, Ah, oh, hey, hey, now I know we have livestock all over the the, the village, but to bring them in the tavern's quite rude. Hey, this sheep saved our life, okay? That's a he person. He he deserves a, a, a he deserves some lamb chops. Ah, uh, if you he defecates, you're dealing with it. You ever hear Deal. of a wolf in sheep's clothing? Well, what about a coward in sheep's clothing? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I <laughs> I don't really see what you're you're hitting at, but you do you want drinks? You said you wanted drinks. Oh, I want whatever yes. you got. I'll, I'll serve you all up an ale, but not your sheep. It stays, you know, on the on the floor. Hey, sheepy boy, save something so she can get you an ale. <laughs> uh, the sheep looks over to Leanna and says, uh, Miss, I'm not a sheep, and I know you can't understand this, which Leanna just hears. Bah, bah, <laughs> oh, I don't know how the spell works. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> <laughs> and to which Leander says, oh, he's a talking one, too. Look at that. Oh, that's bleeding. Yeah, he says he's he says That's an cute. appetite. He wants a beer. 
Well, I'm afraid he's not getting one. We don't give our sheep or any sheep any alcohol around here. But here you go. You all can have some. And she sets out four mugs of ale in front of all of you. Hell yeah. Cheers, Hell boys. Cheers. I want to ask Leander, where's the uh, council? Are they in the back room? Uh, she points over to the side and says, Hi, another meeting going on. I think there's five of them in there this time. Uh, we have six total members, but one's one's always absent, so Who's, that's about uh, as best what, you'll get. What five are in there right now? Uh, I grab my see. drink and start heading that way. Thank you. You've got... Oh, just, yeah. You're welcome, little lass. Uh, you have Jack, Dolwyn, uh, Tillis, of course, Father Merrickson, and Coral. Oh, and I think one of them brought their hound, too. The hound? Can you remind me of... Uh what each one of them does again and their names uh well i suppose so well you have tillis marion he's sort of the the head halfling around here and i guess the the leader or perhaps self-appointed one uh coral's the resident tracker good at tracking hunting and all around good soul and father merrickson he runs the temple of pilor he's the father of uh our old town guardian alexi but here in the Temple of Pelor, I nudge Arthur. <laughs> Did you hear that, bud? He's a uh, he's an alright <laughs> fella. A uh, quick question about the temple. I heard they're having a candle shortage. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard I just any such thing. Oh God. <laughs> well, if you do, let me know. I might have a lead to, about it. I'll keep that in mind. Is um. Oh shoot! What's his name? Feathercock. Still upstairs. Feathercock. Is he still upstairs? Aye, the the poor lad's still resting up above. Still a uh, a little kooky, but recovering slowly. Whatever How long has it been since we left the the crook? Tilius yells last... over towards this door. Who, who in the right mind is <laughs> slamming that door repeatedly? <laughs> Show yourself now! <laughs> Hi. Hi. So I, I believe it, we left yesterday. We traveled at night, and now it's daytime. So we haven't slept at all besides a short rest in the morning. I for real didn't know that y'all could all see that. Oh, you guys did oh, take yeah. a long rest. Uh, around it was a long four rest. in the morning, I believe it was. We so it is the next of... day? Yes. Okay. And then we're meeting the wolves in two days now. Uh, no, it's still, it's still that same day, so it's, it's three days. Three days. Three days, okay. Whatever Saturday is, yeah. All right. I'm going to take my drink, and I'm going to go to the back room as well. Yeah, same here. I, I grab my drink, and I start walking. Uh, is she... Tell us... I whisper uh, to the barkeep, and I'm like, hey, um, if that dude upstairs wakes up, don't tell him I'm here. He's kind of obsessed with me. And I grab my drink, and I, come on, Mr. Sheep, let's go. Uh, it follows and says, oh, okay. As you all enter in, Tillis just looks at you all and says, oh, oh, it's it's you all. And I suppose you have information. No, no, no. Tell your sheep to wait outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get to the sheep in a minute. Yeah, yes, part of the story. This is sheep not is a okay. damn barn. It's part of the story. It's a sheep, but it's not a sheep, but it's a sheep. Just don't worry about it. It's a sheep, but not a sheep. But no, it's no, no. You stay. Stay. No, no. And I start pointing <laughs> at the dog and trying to block it. It's, it, tries to walk, it really wants to sniff the sheep, but it, it pauses doggy, in front get the of sheep. you. No. Doggy. I, uh, I get my stick no. and I just kind of like use it as a bar. No, no, no. Sit. <laughs> the, the dog just kind of looks at you as a, this uh, man up here says, no, come, come, come on back. Come. To which the dog immediately turns and goes and sits next to him. Hey. So. Boy, do we have a story for you. Woo! And then, like, I just, like, scoot past and just, like, hop up on one of these seats and just sit. Man. Wait, I'm not on the table, on the chair. If you hold shift, it'll drop it in a non lock spot. I'm gonna walk over and sit next to the lolifil kind of looking guy i'm gonna go over here and sit be stand right between these guys 
<laughs> Tilius looks at all you sit and say, oh, oh, no, no, please, make yourselves comfortable. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you there, and yeah, yes, you there. To which Kroll says, Tilius, calm, calm down there. We did ask for their help. It's a long story. Yes, that's who we right. want to sit for this. Uh, is this old guy the father? The the priest guy? No, nope. I think it's, it's just... not this guy. Wait, it's that, yep. guy. that guy? Okay, okay. I look to him and say, first off, we found out what happened to your sorcerer. We found out what happened with the wolves. We have a what? proposition with the wolves. And I, like, Sounds rub my eyes. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. You found out what happened to my son. Well, let's start off from the top. And so I kind of go explaining them the whole story um, of how we went upstairs and talked to uh, Feather Rock, and he made a mention that the, the wolves weren't really interested in attacking humans, but rather taking their tools and supplies and that, that they, they were speaking in common tongue. Um, so are you, are you so, saying all this in character? Yes. Okay. Um, oh, should I be speaking like that or? This, yeah, this would be a, how you guys deal with the social inter interaction is going to change how the NPCs view you. So how you tell it is very important. All right. Do uh, you guys have uh, faith in me? I believe oh, boy. you've been doing a lot of the <laughs> openings, so I do have faith in you. Just no. maybe you should play it through the music. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, lads, and I take a sip of my beer. Let's start from the top. So as you know, uh, Feather Rock and a group of other a sheep. OK, the sheep grabs a doorknob uh, with its mouth and pulls it. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. All right. <laughs> so, and we'll take all questions at the end of this. So, Feather Rock and a group of other men were out investigating why the wolves were uh, coming after our sheep, or your sheep, I should say, and your supplies and tools. From what we noticed uh, from talking to him, is that he informed us that they, the wolves themselves, were not too aggressive towards the humans, but rather more interested in grabbing supplies. He also said that. He could have he could have sworn he heard the wolves talking common son. I'm sure all you are aware of that. Yes, yes, I'm I'm aware of this. So at first we thought, you know, this is kind of ridiculous, you know, having a wolf speak in common son. But we just kept that in the back of our mind as our as we begin our investigation. Um so we head uh towards the woods, towards the direction of what that original party did. I think it was past uh, Grimstone's farm was the farm that we passed into the woods. Um, where we got in, uh, ran right into a wild beast, which was like, a, I believe, an owl bear. Um, took care of that. Um, and then headed towards an encampment where we saw like what looked to be like a, a camp with a campfire. Um, something like, you know, a group of like, you know, travelers or bandits would have that they're traveling through. Oh, but I, we didn't. We I, didn't. What's up? I raised my hand up. Um, you forgot about the magic ore that we also ran into. Yes, yes, uh, yes, Arthur. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So we noticed the camping uh, ground, but we didn't notice any humans. Um, but as like, Arthur said pre previously, before we got there, we actually heard this humming noise, like okay? a almost like a vibration and um we uh followed the vibration and we found like this kind of like magical ground um where there was almost like a huge like crater in the ground and burn marks everywhere baka could you go and go more into detail of that since you're more of the magic expert yeah, she eats. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just open my beer real fast hold on <laughs> it was wild magic basically your son tried to I don't know what he was casting uh, but due to his actions the wolves are now well, the wolves are now sentient so, there's two of them that are huge <laughs> as, as I was getting but, to but, but what, of my, I, what of my son then so we 
not we didn't we had no idea about if the wolves were changed or anything like that we did observe that um and so after observing this magic and father i'm going to get to your son i know it's very important we went to the wolf camp and we did confirm that the wolves were speaking in comments on, and had intelligence and what? from what they informed us was that your son gave them intelligence with the use of wild magic. My, he, his wild magic, what it 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 gave them intel. And as as uh, the father's trying to say this, Talia splurts out. Ta talking wolves, you're saying the wolves are they're they're smart now. Yes, they are. Yes, so they've been smartly stealing from us then. They have been. Mm-hmm. Dad and for that, wolves. How many did I you cannot call make them? any excuse for. It. However, let me just explain what their strife has been. So after waking up, quote unquote, I just put my hands in the air. They became cognitive of all their surroundings and of everything that's been going on. In the past, they were just wild beasts going around, eating whatever they could get, you know, Mark saying in their territory. Well, they still kept that territorial idea. Uh, but now they had the intelligence to kind of think for themselves about why they're being territorial with their bond ships and love for each other. As uh, well as... Real, real quick, Richard, while you're saying this, you actually see Coral lean in, and it's all, he's staring directly into your eyes as you're saying all of this with a very serious expression. But continue. So, this group, essentially, all they knew was each other, and the fear of now of having knowledge now they have knowledge that in the past that humans and wolves did not get along however now they had knowledge of how they could better themselves by using technology that humans have already used so they did steal and take from you guys not out of any kind of malice at all i mean yes maybe there is some malice because they were upset that humans were in the woods and hunting them um but for the most part, they did it to survive as a whole. Um, imagine if you and your family was just put, dropped out in the middle of the woods. You would do whatever you could to survive. And that's what these wolves were doing. And I dare say, we approached this camp. We approached, or not with our weapons drawn, but actually thrown on the ground. And we sat there. And the wolves attacked us. But we didn't fight back. We calmly told them explain the situation of the strife that you as a town is going through and how these supplies and these food is important to you to live and even though the wolves attack we still sat there calmly and talked to them and they kind of grew as a community and agreed to listen to us and explain our side of the story and from there on we actually made a pack of them ourselves and became friends with the wolves we found out they're doing what they want to do for the betterment of themselves and you guys are trying to do what's the betterment of yourselves as well too so we decided that instead of bite bicker um attack each other's lands take from each other uh we form a pack between the two of us and we have a communal bond and share the lands the wolves um you know they're a new community think of them as like a as a toddler you know they're still trying to figure themselves out still learning how to do things um still learning how to speak um but they they want to work with you guys and they want to offer you guys protection from anything whether it be like a group of bandits or a bunch of goblins coming in and causing a ruckus at one of someone's farms um in return they want to stay with their hunting lands um in the forest um and learn some technology so they can grow as their own community as well because they do understand that wolves living among men right away might not be the best of ideas but like slowly building a community where they can trade and help each other out would be the best way rather than fighting and i take a drink of my water because i talked a lot sorry about <laughs> rambling <laughs> richard make a persuasion check with advantage All right. Tilius sighs and looks down at the table for a moment. It looks like he's tapping his fingers repeatedly, almost anxiously. And then he says, I did not know 
that we hired a band of performers when I asked you to go take care of our wolf problem. These lies that your spa- And as he's talking, Coral says, Tillis, Tillis. They're telling the truth. To which Tillis just looks at him with his mouth open for a second, and it's almost like he's about to berate him and says, and then Coral says, I know it sounds far-fetched, but and then his eyes dart to you, Richard. And Coral says, I know that one speaks the truth. You know how good a judge of character I am. His words, they weren't flawed, they weren't feathered. Everything was the truth. What Thank you. would you have of us do then, if they want to so, work together? Um, we talked to the wolves, and on um, in three days from today, um, we're going to meet down by the old Grimstone farm, I believe. Um, they're actually going to return some of the sheep um, that they took from you guys um, as a sign of asking for forgiveness and peace. And they would like to speak with you guys directly and hash out the details of uh, some kind of plan or agreement. Uh, both of you guys can come together for the benefit of both communities. Um, and to make sure that this pact goes through, um, I want to surrender our uh, reward until a pact is broken. So we're not here we'll, we'll pay for everything ourselves in the meantime we'll pay for rooms um so we're not trying to squeeze extra money out of you i know you guys are going through with Kyle, and then we can get all reimbursed for that once the pack is met um so you don't think we're scamming you guys uh father merrickson uh, looks a bit sad and dejected but he uh he looks to you and says it is by the will of pelor that you all came through here then I don't know what happened to my son, but even decline the reward after what you've been through, that's very noble of you. Yes. And then so uh, I'll look and then, around and give a nice nod to everyone. And then, Father, I, I, <laughs> I know this has been painful for you, but we have to uh, discuss the matters of your son. Um, we um, didn't it, technically find any trace of him other than his spell and exactly. a point of origin. Um, so... Yeah, we don't fine. necessarily ha wild magic is very volatile we don't necessarily know if he is dead or just somewhere else I'm afraid I can already feel it he I've known him since we were just little boys and his magic was always a bit uncontrollable he did his best, and when he became the town guardian, it was almost like his crowning moment. He was so proud. If he was in danger when his magic started erupting, then I already know what's happened to him. Yes, um, and we spoke to the wolves because they knew of your son from the intelligence uh, they gave him, and they do believe that he is no longer here. Not 100% confirmed, uh, as Baka said. Um, but if we find any more leads since it's something else we can kind of discuss with the wolves as well uh, when we meet maybe they'll provide more insight now that they're a little bit more relaxed instead of having a bunch of random humanoids show up at their campsite which um, brings us to this thing yes <laughs> and I point to the sheep behind me over my shoulder oh yes yes your pet sheep you brought let me guess you brokered a deal with the sheep people and they wish to advance in technology and whatnot is this their representative this is your sorcerers your guardian of your town's master <laughs> so now we have to go <laughs> fix this oh okay sure and natilius leans back and just almost like he's checked out now just crosses his arm and just looks at the ceiling I um I look at father, and I tell him I tell him, sir, this is your son's master. That that is, and uh, he's he's human. I promise. This yeah. is more magic. He looks down at the sheep, which he's what he been hears changed. The sheep looks up at him, just lets out a sad bah. To which father Merrickson just says, "This is this is shine bright." Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, um, 
his other apprentice, Nook, uh, stole a powerful wand from him and turned him into a sheep. Which um, we would like more information about Nook if you guys do know about him. And you mean, you mean? But we also need protection for Shinebright. Ahmed Nook. Is that his last name? Nook is his last name. He studied with Alexi for years. Um, How long? Oops, go ahead. So, essentially, and I kind of like lo show him like my wounds because I'm still kind of badly beat up. Um, a group of goblins and an orc and some wild animals who were went after us um, under the control of Nook. Um, uh, Tilly leans forward we're... when you say that, and it actually looks a lot more serious now. And they wanted to get the sheep and we refused to pass it over and the reason why was because um the sheep had a um scroll in its mouth um and it was an animal speaking scroll so we could actually communicate with um him right now and i kind of give him a nod no uh, the sheep just nods back at you and then looks at yeah. the group so we're not folks who give up things lightly and the sheep, even though we were crazy to see a sheep come after us and start talking, um, after the venture, it seemed like the most normal thing, actually. Um, we decided to help him out. And unfortunately, it looks like Nook is going to probably end up sending more um, more guys to come after the sheep. So Nook has turned. He caused this. Yes. And Good that is confirmed gods. by both the sheep and the mercenaries that were sent out to get them. They confessed um, that they were specifically sent out to get the sheep no matter what. And unfortunately, some of them lost their lives because they would do whatever their case. I don't know what kind of spell Nook has them over or some kind of blackmail or money or whatever. But they're, they will do whatever they want to get the sheep back. Our town has suffered enough with these thefts and the famine because of it. If there's goblins and orcs now here, too, that's... that's too much. Well, if we make a deal with the wolves, perhaps they can provide protection for what would probably be coming of Nux and his... and his goonies. can't pronounce a better sentence. Uh, the, the sheep starts bleeding out loud when you mention the wolves, but you all hear him saying, We should not involve them. It's too dangerous. Well, this is something we can discuss, because I would imagine that Nook would send more folks to come after you within the next three days. Well, right I, now. Myself don't, I myself don't like tilling my thumbs waiting for someone to attack. That's why we should go now. I need a rest. We do need we the rest. Go. After yeah. your rest. Did you yeah, see yeah, what yeah. I did to that bear back there? I'm exhausted. Yeah, I'm still traumatized by that. Kill council. I know I know this has been a lot, so allow us to rest and take care of this sheep situation. Father, if we find any more details about your son, which I'm sure we will, um, when we get there, I'll, I'll feel free to relay it to you as soon as we get back. However, for whatever reason, we do not make it back. Please, 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 in three days, send some representatives to the Grimstone Farm. I'll gladly volunteer to go check it out. Thank you. All right. Nap time. In the meantime. What and after I say that, I have like a relief in my face, and I chug my beer, and I fall asleep in my chair. <laughs> wow! I well. just <laughs> my way. Well, I just stretch. Uh, Sal and I, I jump down and pat Sal on the back. You go, you go, deal with that. <laughs> Always the babysitter. <laughs> I, I snap back up real quick as my chair falls down. Um, I help you, Sal, but I'm, I'm hurt. Grab him by the collar. Come on, Richard, let's go. Uh, before we leave, Father, do you have any other information on Note before we head out? Here, take our rest. 
Uh, he was a very ambitious boy. Never thought he'd resort to something like this, but no, I'm afraid not. Oh, did he did he grew up in this city by uh, this town by chance? Not from here necessarily, but he's been here most of his life. Did he have like a personal quarters? Maybe we can look into. The boy stayed with me mostly until he went to the well, a Shinebright's tower. I was going to say Wizard's Tower, but he just stares at the sheep for a moment and just pauses <laughs> in his speech. Would you allow us uh, to enter your house to take a look around to see anything that can help us understand more about Nook, understand about your son, so that way, within the coming three days, we will have a better opportunity to be stronger. I'm... You're welcome to look around the church, but my personal quarters, I'm afraid, I'm not comfortable with the idea. Understood. If there's anything in the house that you wish to share with us, please, do not hesitate. Come find us. Nah, Merrickson nods. Alright. I nod bad, and I'm just, I'm walking out. Uh, father. Yep. Hmm? very important question page right um oh yes um Imagine so you, you knew no most of your uh, most of his life do you know of any orc named gus or looks running with any kind of orc or orc like does that ring any bells i don't really know him as well as you think i just know that I took him in for a bit, and then he lived with Shinebright since, but I don't know of any orc named Guz. Gotcha. Alrighty. Sheepy boy. Let's get some grub. Bah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so I had no serious, situ serious situation, but that just makes what you, me What are you trying to eat, do bud? We, do we still technically have that room? Uh, you can ask. Okay, I'm asking. You're asking the bar. You're asking the. You can ask Leanna, not me. Yeah. Okay, that just wasn't your voice. I thought you were just asking me. Um, you, the room is still available, Les. You, you've sounds like done a lot for us and are planning to do more. So, it's on the house. Thank uh, you. Leanna, well, yeah, how much were those drinks? I finished uh, my drink. As long as you're working go. for us, uh, the drinks will keep coming at no charge. As as I heard that the room is still available, I dash upstairs. Top bunk. Well, uh, how much would those <laughs> drinks have cost if we weren't working? I'm hoping. For you? I kind of I kind of look back at the sheep and like motion this way. I'm just uh, kind of at the bar, just kind of like I'm I'm hurting so much. I don't want to move. <laughs> uh, they're about a silver have? each. All right. Well, my buddy Gus was such a generous friend, and I put a gold piece on the table. Take this as a tip for your hospitality. <laughs> I can do that if you want, sir, but uh, I'll just add it to the bag that you'll be getting later. Well, at least let these good folks in here drink on drink on that piece of gold. Well, that I can do. A bag and then, we're um, getting later. <laughs> and a piece of bread or something on the way up. Ah, sure, sure. And she uh, goes back to the counter, and just grabs a a full loaf, and comes back to you and holds it out. The sheep over here. Hell yeah. Sheep, you like bread? Ah, uh, I wish, but I'm afraid the only edible thing for me is outside. It's grass and buttercups. Do you need to eat? Uh, yes. Will you come with me? Uh, I don't want to be alone. Guys, I'm gonna go watch the sheep shit. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> take, take the sheep outside. And I'm, I'm, eating, <laughs> I'm eating the loaf while I'm watching the sheep eat the grass. Yeah, so I'm right to start the grass. For, take the dog out for a walk. Oh, and the, the rest of you are going upstairs to long rest? Is that what we're doing? Yeah. Long I'm rest. sitting yep. at the bar right now, just kind of waiting until my body stops hurting. 
Oh man, you just hang um, out at the bar. I got gotcha. you. boy, would you like me to play a song for you while you eat? Uh, Shine Bright has a mouthful of grass and just looks over you for a moment and, and uh, kind of mumbles out. Um, no, that's okay. I'll be quiet. Oh, you said yes, of course. <laughs> I've been trying this new rap out. <laughs> and I get my. Uh, oh my god. So you guys know, um. The equivalent of here, let me give you my mix. Who's that? Yeah. Who's that, um. Oh, shoot. Who's that, uh, hip hop artist who, um, plays the flute and twerks? Oh, uh. uh is it Richard Lizzo. D. Ross? Lizzo. Yeah. Lizzo? Okay. So Lizzo. I started shaking my butt at the sheep, and I, <laughs> and I got my flute out. And I'm gonna go, doo -doo 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 -doo, and then I'm gonna start rapping. You're a sheep, but you're also a creep. You make me wanna leap, Mr. Sheep. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And it's working. <laughs> make a performance check, Richard. Hell yes. <laughs> it's gonna be quite oh difficult. My God. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> so the sheep's kind of just chewing and staring at you. And it seems to be pondering something, almost like it's uh, confused with itself. And then finally, after it swallows some of the grass, says, You know, I disagree with the lyrics, but that wasn't half bad, young man. <laughs> hey, I'll take a tip if you got anything on you. Uh, he pulls up some more grass talk? and says, I'll share it with you. Hell yeah. I, I put my head on the ground and start eating the grass. <laughs> <laughs> it looks at you like uh... you're insane. <laughs> and then just eats <laughs> one more yeah. piece and says, I you know, sheepy boy. We're going to be a good team. As long as my body gets back to normal. You got any daughters? <laughs> <laughs> no family at all here. Nieces? <laughs> this is not a discussion I wish to have. Grandmothers? <laughs> <laughs> and everyone heads upstairs. Arthur, how long are you planning to stay at the bar? I actually wanted to see if I can overhear any conversation. Um, not really. Everyone here is pretty quiet and keeping to themselves. Most folks are sitting alone having a drink. Uh, a lot of them seem to be dressed in more farming attire, so it's likely you're, since you're more in the evening now, uh, people are winding down, getting a couple drinks before they head home for the evening. Uh, but not much talking going on. Alright, in that case, I'm gonna tell the bartender, have a good night, and I'm gonna head upstairs. Okay. And that is a really good place to call it, as you guys go upstairs for a long rest after many battles. <laughs> what, are show us, oh, yeah. what are you showing the phone for? That was that was the stream! You were showing what's That's going on! <laughs> Street oh. Sorry. <laughs> well, guys, that was a pretty intense fight. You went through. It got hairy real quick, and they all decided to flip the kill switch and actually start murdering stuff. So, <laughs> turn, turn yeah. in your favor gotta after do that. What you gotta do. Oh, I, I have, I have yet to kill anything. Everybody else around me has murdered somebody at least. You were three damage away from incinerating a wolf. Yeah, with your hands of fire. I didn't die though, did it? No, My friends were in you. danger. My oh friends God! Were in yes, danger. I'll. I thought you could cast Levitate, Baka. I saw... But because Levitate doesn't necessarily mean, like, they're gonna levitate in the air, and it would have been smarter. Don't worry about it. <laughs> sure, levitate them. I can only do lift. one. Well, now my dagger smells like cork blood. <laughs> well, I walked away, so whatever Clean happened, it. happened. Gross. I looked it off. Orc, orc blood goes well, uh, sheep grass. That was a good. That was a good mega recap too. You told the whole Wolves of Wealth story there, Richard, to those guys. It was you very did. convincing. Uh, Arthur, thank you very much for the magic part. I forgot about that part. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. I noticed that the moment you start you started speaking about the campfire. I'm like, oh shoot, you just glazed over that. Well, I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to like be like, oh, your son's dead. Sorry, dude. And then he's going to be disinterested <laughs> the whole time. No, you know? because that that gave Baka a little bit of opportunity to talk about the wild magic. It's true. Wow. It was good teamwork. It was all teamwork. Sal does all the killing. You three did all the talking. It was very good. That was Easy. Yeah, it was great. Easy. <laughs> we had I great energy. I got I'm some AOE. I got some AOE, so. All right. Well, we're going to we're gonna go ahead and get out of here now. So I'm going to talk to the maybe audience for a minute. I don't know. 
whoever out there I has been remember. watching, thank you. We do this on Twitch every Wednesday, and this is on YouTube as well. Cloak and Stagger Live on both platforms. Check it out. We got a whole bunch of stuff uploaded on there, and we do it every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's our normal starting time. Sometimes a little earlier, sometimes a little later, but give or take around that time. Uh, you can catch us also on Monday and Saturdays, whole different crew. This is the Wednesday crew, the Monday crew. I run that game, and my Saturday crew, I'm actually a player. I play Wilzu Snapple Gap. I haven't been able to play him in a, quite a while because of holidays, but it's a lot of fun when we do it. And most of us meet up in person for it, too, so check it out. We got some cool miniatures for that. Uh, besides that, that's all I really got. Y'all got any shout-outs you want to make? Anyone out there in the ether? Um... um. Shout out to Yoshi P for making a great game. They are playing a lot of Final Fantasy lately. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure this podcast does not need my shout out because they're one of the more popular podcasts. But if you have the time, whoever's listening, uh, the Bananas podcast, any streaming platform, very hilarious. Get out the, of your time. You'll the Bananas you'll, Bananas podcast. I'm actually wearing a shirt from them. Oh, shit. So very, very good podcast. Um, they're good guys. I don't know them personally because they're like superstars in Hollywood. <laughs> but maybe this shout out will get their attention and I can go join that podcast and leave you guys behind. Wow! Well, one okay, can, Richard. One Never can know. only hope that the opportunity wow, presents Cameron. itself. <laughs> oh, man. All right, but we're, uh, we're getting out of here. Oh, drink wait, wait. more water. Dro, you drink more water? That's like yeah, oh, everybody, everybody that. watching needs to drink more water. Try to stay hydrated. Okay, yeah, see, look, I got my water right here. I had a that doesn't look like water. I had a There's sweet tea. Water in it. Down. No birds. <laughs> okay, we're getting out of here. Look. We're gone. Everybody, thanks again. Y'all have a good evening. Take what do I do with my hands? <laughs> you can wave them around. You can. I don't. I don't know. I don't, you could. You do whatever you guys. <laughs> <laughs>